Hi everybody. How are you? Today we're going to work on learning how to use this piece of equipment and hopefully you know the name of it. Think. Triple beam balance. So hopefully you got that right. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the basics of this balance and later in today's class you're going to be able to practice on your own with the people in your group. So why do we call it a triple beam balance? If I were to hold the balance up, by the way, when you move a balance, you always hold it securely by each side and use your finger gently to stop the balance from clickety clackety on the track. We don't want to be slamming it around because it'll lose its calibration. But if I was to show this balance to you like this, do you see how many bars go across the top? three bars. So we call it a triple beam balance. Each of these bars going across the top is the beam. So each beam actually corresponds to a different level of mass. And remember, we're dealing with mass when we use a balance. This equals that. I brought some masses out to help us with this lesson today, and you're going to be using these in class when you're practicing. This is a 50 gram mass. So if I wanted to make this hand balance with this hand, what would I have to put in it? A 50 gram mass. And if you could imagine in your mind, these two things would now balance. So this is a balance. And what we are doing is we're gonna balance this mass, and then we're gonna use the masses on the beams to balance just as if the beams were the things in my other hand. So. Since this is 50 grams, I would actually have to use my top beam, which is an in increment. This mass right here is 10 grams. And so 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, if I move that mass all the way to the side, that would be equivalent to 100 grams. So what's happened to my balance when I put 100 grams there? It would be like this, wouldn't it? So. What I really need to do is move my mass on this beam back to the 50. And on the top of each beam are small indentations that the mass actually rests in. And it's important that you get to the place where the mass drops in the little resting spot. You can feel it and you can hear it. So when I set that mass on the 50 and I put my 50 on there. I'm going to see that my balance now, and this one's a teeny bit out of calibration, but my balance now is going to move up and it's going to zero itself here on the zero on the side of the balance. I'm going to add a couple masses here because it looks like my balance is a little bit off. It's off by one total gram. That's still pretty accurate. And you'll see that this now points at the zero. That means that I've reached the balance point. So the top beam is a total of 100. So in the middle is 50. What would happen if I put an additional 20 grams on my balance? Uh-oh, now my pan has fallen back this way, which means I would have to add more mass to the top beam bringing it to 70, 71, and then, sorry, that was the wrong piece. I need the twin. Oh, I need the blue one. There we go. And when I put that extra 20 here, once again, I've balanced with both of those masses. So why does it have triple beams? You can actually mass quite a bit of mass on this balance. This beam is worth a total of 100 grams. But the middle beam is the biggest of the beams. It can go to up to 500 grams. So we start with 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 as we move across that center beam. The last beam is in the front. And this little bitty mass right here, the total number of mass on this beam is only 10 grams. So, <coughs> let me generate a mass for us. Let's put 100, 200, 40, 5. That's 5. 
46 grams. So let's see, and this is what you're gonna practice, is if you create a mass and you know how much mass is here, can you get the masses on the beams to line up with the corresponding mass? So I have 246 grams. So I'm gonna start with my large mass and I'm gonna find the 200 and the little arrow will point to the 200. We can still see that there's not enough mass on this side. Then I'm going to go ahead and move this up to the 40. So I now have 240 grams of mass now on my beams, but I'm still not balanced. And then I have, it's actually six more grams that I need. So I'm going to come across on the bottom beam and I'm going to come across until I find the six. And when I find that six, just like that, you're going to see that the balance has indeed moved to the neutral position where I have equal masses on the beams and on the pan, which is what this part of the balance is called. So I have it on six. You know, if I was in between six and seven, what do you think each of those small black lines on the bottom beam is actually worth? Think about that. Between six and seven, there are 10 lines. So what would be one tenth of one gram? 0.1 grams, or one tenth of a gram in a decimal system. So I can even mass things down to one tenth or one one hundredth of a gram with this particular tool in the laboratory. That's pretty sensitive. After we're done, we gently slide our masses back over to the side and we can begin the process again. So in these next few minutes, I'm going to challenge your groups to, first of all, mass a known quantity that's very simple. Start with 100. Use the large mass. Then I want you to go to 20 and I want you to use the medium sized bar mass. And then I'm going to ask you to use the purple mass. Or let's do the green one, which is five grams. And all you will need to mass that is the small mass that's on the very bottom or the smallest beam that's on the balance. So practice with those. And then once you're good at it, we'll let you start today's measurement lab where you are going to be determining the mass of some unknown objects and recording them on your lab paper. Happy balancing!